Hello YouTube and welcome back to the conservatory. Um, as you can see, I've got the carbs back on the workbench again. Now you may remember in the last video, I uh, got the bike running and I said, oh, we've got a little fuel leak, shouldn't be a problem. How wrong I was, that comment would really come back to bite me on the arse. <clears throat> so whilst the bike was running, what was happening is fuel was actually dripping from these two Allen bolts around this part of the, uh, the float bowl. So my first assumption was that there was a problem with the float bowl not sealing. So I've taken the float carbs off, taken the float bowl off, cleaned everything up, put it all back together again, still it leaked. Took it all apart again, tried a different float gasket, that didn't cure it. Um, got another float bowl, tried that, still didn't cure it. So every time I'd run it, I'd refitted the airbox and everything. And all I could see was the fuel dripping down the bottom. On the last attempt, I decided to fire it up without the airbox on. And what I discovered was the fuel wasn't leaking around the float bowl at all. It was actually leaking from this joint here on the, on the plastic T-piece. And what was happening was the fuel was leaking out, running down the back of this bit round the, the carb and it was only when it got to the bottom of the float pole that it was actually dripping. So it turned out I was looking in completely the wrong place to start off with. So I've taken the carbs apart, pulled the T-piece out, uh, cleaned up in here, put another O-ring on and it's still leaking. So the only thing I can assume, and there is definitely too much wiggle room there, you can see it doesn't really feel that tight, is actually the car body itself has corroded, um, worn away, and we're not getting a good seal there. Fortunately, I've got another set of carbs and another number two car body. So I've given that a quick run through the ultrasonic cleaner, blasted everything out with some compressed air uh, and, and carb cleaner. And uh, so, for the God knows how many times, we're going to dismantle the carbs and swap this carb body over for this one. So, here we go. And here you can see this is just flapping around in there so although there is a bit of resistance it's not as tight as it should be certainly if we compare it to the replacement carb it does feel a lot more snug okay right strip this down take all the parts off and swap them over to that carb. Okay, well, that's everything in on the bottom. Um, I did actually have someone ask me about this in one of the videos, and if I could actually give them some dimensions. 
It's really quite simple. The dimension across there just needs to be wide enough to clear the floats. And then that is your critical dimension there, which is your float height, uh, which in this case is 8mm. And obviously, because we swapped everything around, it's probably affected the float height. So let's just double check. And amazingly, it's still spot on. Remembering, of course, you've got to hold the, the carbs at 45 degrees because of the little plunger, which caused them to drop a little bit further. Right, so that's the bottom end done. And uh, really, everything else you've all seen before in the, the carb rebuilding video. So I'm going to carry on um, stripping the carbs and uh, swapping parts over and let's see if we manage to solve this fuel leak once and for all. Okay so that's the carbs reassembled and I've manually rebalanced the, the butterflies on them because obviously I had to loosen off the, the setting screws to get the fiddly little screw springs back in. So before I put the the carbs back on the bike I thought now would be a good time to talk about a bit of an anomaly that you get with these little CBR 400s. So here's my digital verniers and hopefully you'll be able to see what's up on the reading. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you the, the inlet for the fuel hose and hopefully as you will see it is to all intents and purposes mil. If we look at the fuel tap where that fits on, oh look at that, near as damn it, 10 mil. So you would think that you use a 10 mil hose, well yeah, because if we take the Honda filters, yeah, 9.97, near as damn it, 10 mil. So basically from there Oh, sorry, from the fuel tap to the fuel filter is a 10mm line and certainly from there to the fuel pump should be a 10mm line. Unfortunately it all goes a bit astray when you take the fuel pump itself. If we look at the inlet and outlet on those you can see they're only 8mm and I have absolutely no idea why Honda did that. So everything else is 10mm fitting apart from the fuel pump, which is an eight. Um, so what it means is you've basically got to come off the carbs with a 10 mil hose. You can persuade an eight mil hose to fit on by warming it up, but it's really not ideal. As you can see, a 10 mil is pretty snug. In fact, I need to loosen that off a little bit. And cack handed here, which doesn't help. That's better. So there is the fuel hose, and actually, I could have done with the clamp the other way around. Let's try the other end. Yeah, that's better. Bearing in mind that this comes over here and then the air box sits on there. You want to make sure that the hose, the hose clamp doesn't get in the way. And while we're talking about the clamps for the hoses, you really need to make sure you use the right style and that is one of those, which is a proper fuel hose, um, hose clamp. If you use a normal Jubilee clip, they do tend to distort and they don't really seal properly. Um, you can see there's, there's one I've taken off that was on there originally and hopefully you can see it's all sort of twisted. Obviously, if you're using the original diameter hoses, 
then you can use the original spring clips. Right, let's get that tightened up. Now, like I said, we've got 10 mil, but obviously a 10 mil is going to be way too big to fit on the fuel hose. So what I've made up in the lathe very quickly is this little adapter here, which goes from 10 mil to 8 mil. Now you may be worried that obviously the centre bore is only about six and a half mil because I had to leave some material there and will it restrict the flow? Well actually if this was a normal gravity fed system yes it would and I'd be a bit concerned about it but of course we've got the pump that will overcome this small restriction so like I said I whipped that up in the lathe very very quickly um, purely because the ones I ordered off eBay haven't arrived yet so we'll shove him in there, clamp him up, and then what I've got to go from the, the carbs and this little adapter to the actual fuel pump is some 8mm diameter hose. Now bizarrely the outer diameter is the same, but as you can see, this is pretty thick walled stuff. Um, I quite like it, it's a silicon based hose, very flexible. Um, I just happened to find it at an auto jumble one, one weekend, so I use it on all my bikes. So now you can see we've got 10mm adapter and 8mm, and that will now all fit nicely onto the fuel pumps. So I'm going to switch you off and uh, just tighten all these up, get the carbs refitted back on the bike because you've seen all that so many times before and then we'll fire it up and fingers crossed we've cured this leak. If we haven't I think I'm going to set fire to the bike and give up. So I will see you shortly. Okay so I've refitted the carbs and you'll notice when I've fitted them I've refitted them with the the airbox stroke trumpet tray on and the reason I've done that although it partially obscures the joint that we're trying to see what this does is it actually holds the carb square and in line along with the, the front rail which is by the, the choke mechanism if you try and fit the carbs without this it's quite easy to get them sort of twisted so you always make sure this is fitted before you, you bolt or screw the carbs up on the rubbers keep them square. So I've uh, fitted the auxiliary tank and we've got fuel. Uh, prime the system so fingers crossed it should fire up. fitted the airbox on just while I was running it um, so it doesn't run quite so lean and the good news is after about five minutes of running we've got no, no obvious fuel leaks all the hoses are as dry as they should be and uh, thank Christ at last I have solved that problem as I said that's been one of those things I have gone backwards and forwards God knows how many times taking the carbs off and refitted them and it is purely down to the fact that this carb body was worn in here, preventing it from sealing properly. And the weird thing is, looking at it, you would never ever tell. So, uh, yeah, well, that's that destined for the scrap pile. Uh, shame, really, but there we go. Okay, well, I suppose the good news is, at least I had a, a partial set of carbs that I was able to nick the other body off. 
So we'll call that a, suc a success. If only I could say it properly. Right, now we've done that, I think it's time to properly fit the air box and we'll move on to fitting the tank and fitting the rest of the fuel lines. So I'm gonna go and have a cup of tea to celebrate, but I'll be back shortly. Okay, so the, the air box is back on and so far we don't appear to have any unwanted fuel leaks. So fingers crossed that's all that solved. Um, I've run the, the hose to the fuel pump. Obviously we need that when we, we test fired it. But we're now about ready to refit the fuel tank and uh, fit the fuel tap and all the rest of the hoses. But before we fit the fuel tap, tank even, there is one last thing to fit. And that's this screen brace. Um, the screen brace sits just here and obviously it's almost in, impossible to fit with the tank in place. So as I don't really want to take the tank off again, once it's fitted, uh, I've had enough backwards and forwards with all this already. I'm just going to fit this on. So, so what you have, there's two little rubbers and we've got some top hats. Now I don't think this is actually the original um, system but it's what I've got with the bike, so it's what we're going to use. I have dug out some nice stainless steel dome headed allen bolts, so at least it looks a bit more interesting, or a bit less of a lash up. What you tend to find with these screen braces is they invariably end up a little bit bent over time. So you may need to do a little bit of tweaking to them to get the fairing to fit properly. Uh, this one doesn't look too bad actually. So fingers crossed we'll get away with it. There we go. You can see we've still got a bit of adjustment and movement in it. Right. That's the screen brace fitted. Let's go and retrieve the tank. So here's the tank. Um, probably can't see a lot there, so let me just move you down a bit. So here's the, the fuel tank. Ooh. So as I said, it's just been sprayed up using ordinary aerosol paint. Um, hasn't come up too bad actually. I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. It's far from perfect, but perfectly fine for a race bike. So the first thing I need to fit is the front grommet. Another little top hat just to sit in there. And hold everything in place. That one actually feels a bit tight, but it'll do. The next thing we need to fit is our fuel cap. And of course, nothing says race bike quite like. A racing filler cap. Now I have cleaned out these three holes. I've just run a tap down them because they were bound to be full of paint. It's quite clever actually. Um, obviously it seals around the tank there and there is actually a little, little hole just there which allows uh, air to come in and replace the, the fuel as you use it. Um, and when you when you screw the lid on it doesn't go all the way down and obscure that hole. So, for a cheapy Chinese part, it's pretty well, pretty good.
and it just reuses the original bolts that the, the Honda filler cap would have been screwed down with. Could do with a little bit of a clean up from storage, but uh, yeah, looks pretty good. And now, time to fit the fuel tap itself. So it goes on this spigot, but obviously, there's a little bit of overspray on it, and I do need to actually paint the underside of the tank properly. Um, I'm just going to brush paint it with some, some white. Hammerite or something similar, um, purely because it's there for protection, you won't actually see it. Now, there is a little bit of corrosion around the tap here, so I don't think I've got any Scotch Brite in here. So, bear with me a few seconds. I'm going to go and grab a Scotch Brite and just clean up in here, and then we'll carry okay, on. Okay, so I've got a sheet of uh, Scotch Brite. And I'm just going to run around the inside here just to get rid of the little bit of corrosion that's formed. After all the trouble I had with the, the carbs, I'm not going to take any risks with this. going to make myself a cup of tea and I actually have an ulterior motive for making the tea and that's to do this. So I've got a bit of fuel hose in now this is 8 mil hose and I'm actually going to try and use it on the fuel tap so I've got it soaking in hot water which should soften it up enough that it will stretch over the fuel tap. Um, Obviously, this is going straight to an 8mm filter and then onto the actual. There we go. So you can see, even though it is 8mm hose, just warm it up and it will soften up enough that you can stretch it and fit it on your fuel tap. So I've got the hose, got the fuel tap, um, a little bit of the hose on, we'll probably end up trimming that a bit later on. Uh, it was just a lot easier to fit it now than it will be once, the, once it's on the tank. And I just need to grab a as well tighten it up while we're at it okay like I said I'm probably going to end up trimming this to suit a bit later on but it was all easier to fit now. Okay, one fuel hose <clears throat> and a new fuel tap o ring. So the the o rings for the fuel taps you can actually get these from Litec, same place as you get the carb rebuild kit. Never. Um, so I think I mentioned in a previous video, well worth ordering some of these at the same time as you order your carb rebuild kit. I'm just going to put a light smear of grease on this. Just to hold it in place. 
place and this will sit down in the recess that I've just cleaned out. Very crude because I don't have a spanner big enough. I'm just going to use the adjusting to tighten it up. And the actual tap itself should stick out at about 90 degrees. ready to refit the tank. There's just one last thing to fit. <clears throat> and that's the, the rubber that sits on the end here. Unfortunately this one's a little bit past its best, uh, but it's the only one I've got. So it will have to do. There is a bit of a knack to fitting these. Especially with a bit of hose of it. And the trick is to tilt it at about 45 degrees and just hook the tap underneath the uh, seat rail. Place this black finish Allen bolt with a stainless steel one, but uh, I don't fancy popping back out in the garage to go and get that. So that's a little job for another day. There we go. dirty fingerprints all over it. Right, so I think I'm going to move you around a little bit because we're going to talk about the problems with connecting the, uh, the fuel hose up to the fuel pump and including a filter. As you'll see there's not a lot of room. So let me just move you. Okay, hopefully you can see there's our fuel tap <coughs> and there's our fuel pump. Now, if we were going direct to the fuel pump, that wouldn't be an issue. But I do want to include a filter in it. And okay, it's not much of a filter, but it's a filter nonetheless. And that's going to sit the, the standard Honda one. Actually goes on this little bit here in this Holder. Oh, I'll be lucky enough. Oh, there you go. So a uh, cheapy, cheapy replacement does actually fit.
think I'm just going to mark where I want to cut the, uh, the hose. In case you're wondering, this is one of those Tipex pens, really handy for marking stuff. Now with these fuel filters there is actually a right way and a wrong way to fit them. And the right way is to have the fuel going into the transparent part and coming out of the white part. The theory being that as it filters, let's take him off, <clears throat> as it filters your, your fuel, any debris will collect in the bottom and you can see it. If you were to go the other way, any debris would actually sit inside the filter element and you wouldn't see it. So although we've now covered it up with, uh, with this, it's quite easy just to pop it off and check it out. Finally, we need to come from here to here, and this one is the one that's always a bit of pig. <clears throat> so, I've took my hose. Is that long enough? No. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Right, well the idea is I'm going to run the hose so that it comes round and kind of doubles, doubles back on itself that but I think I'm gonna to have to take the tank off in order to do that so let me have a fiddle around and because uh, you can't really see a lot because my hands are in the way and I will show you the finished job when it's done as seems to be the way with everything fuel related on this bike that did take a few attempts but basically we've got a hose that comes from the fuel tap kind of kinks out and goes into the filter itself comes out the filter and then I've actually looped it all the way around here so that it avoids chafing on there uh, and then comes up and connects to the, the fuel pump there and then obviously you've got the hose out the fuel pump goes along there through the adapter and onto the carbs so yes that was that was probably about the fourth or fifth version of what I wanted to do but I think we're there now um, fingers crossed that is now it for the fuel system. Obviously I do have to put some petrol in the fuel tank and uh, run it all through and check for leaks, but I think I've waffled on enough for, for this episode. 
So I'm going to leave it there. So thank you all for watching. Um, look after yourselves and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon.